What's going on guys, John Alder here from Konami.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use HTML with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at using HTML in your Kinter app. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Konami.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership, that's all my courses, videos, and books. Runtime time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use HTML in your Kinter app. Now, this is really, really cool, and we can do a lot of really interesting things, including using links that go straight to web pages, using images both from your computer and from online, and doing other things like ordered list, unordered list, making things bold and italic and things like that. So we're going to get into all of that in this video. So I've got a file called HTML.py. It's our basic Kinter starter code that we always have using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And you can also find the code for this video and all my videos in the comment section below, as well as a link to the Kinter playlist that has almost 200 other Kinter videos. So check that out if you haven't seen it so far. So the first thing we need to do is pip install a few things in our terminal. And to use HTML in Kinter, we need to use something called TK HTML view. And we have to pip install that. Now, it requires several things that have to be installed first. So the first thing you need is to pip install requests. And likely you already have this, I already have it on mine, so it's already installed. You also need something called Pillow, which is the Python image library. We've used this lots of times uh, throughout this playlist. So pip install P-I-L-L-O-W capital P, I've already got it on mine, so it says that you've already got it. And then finally, we need to pip install TK HTML view. And I've already got this as well, so it says uh, you've already got it, but uh, for your computer, it will go ahead and install those three things. So that's all we need. Now we can start using this. So let's head back over to our code and we need to import this thing. So let's go from TK HTML view. I want to import HTML label. And there's a few things that come with this. HTML label is the main one we're gonna look at, but there are a couple other ones as well. If you wanna learn more about this, I head over to your web browser and I just Google TK HTML view. And the first thing that popped up is the pypy.org docs for this thing. And you could see, it requires pillow, it requires request, it also requires Python 3.4 or later. I assume you've got that since we're on like 3.9 right now. And you can read through here and see all the different things you can do, but mostly these are the HTML tags that you can use. Now, this is not a comprehensive sort of port of HTML for Kinter, but it does have most of the main things you're gonna want. You can see we can do uh, links, A tags, we can make things bold, we can use line breaks, we can use code snippets, you can use divs, you can use uh, EM, which stands for uh, emphasis, like a italic text, H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6 tags, which is really cool. You can use an image tag. I is also italics, but it's sort of deprecated. Instead, you're gonna wanna use EM, or you can use I, I guess it doesn't really matter. We can use images, just like regular HTML image tags. We can use list items, we can use ordered list, we can use unordered lists, we can do p tags, pre tags, span, strong, and underline. So these are the main things we've got that come with this, and these are the things we can use, and this is what we're gonna look at using in this video. So, okay, those are the documentation. Let's get into actually building something. So I'm gonna create a label, I'm gonna call it my underscore label, and this is gonna be a label, and we wanna put it in root, and we want the text to equal, let's just say hello world, Right, and then let's go my underscore label dot pack and give this a pad Y of like 20 to push it down the screen. Now this is how we do a normal label. Now if you wanna use HTML from now on, uh, we have to modify this just a little bit. So instead of a label, this is gonna be an HTML label, right? And instead of text, we're gonna use HTML. So now all you have to do is inside your quotes, use whatever regular HTML you wanna use. And if you're not familiar with HTML, HTML is hypertext markup language. It is the thing that all websites are, are created with. So if you go to any website and right click and view page source, this is HTML. All of this code right here is HTML. So if you don't know HTML, this video is probably not very exciting for you. If you do know HTML, this is likely a very exciting video. <laughs> so we can use all of those HTML things that we looked at on this page. Uh, these tags right here, these HTML tags. So let's start out just by making this large. Let's use an H1 tag. So to do that, we just inside of here, use our H1 tag. And that's all there is to it. 
And there's a couple of tips and tricks I can show you, but that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and save this and run it. Head back over to our terminal and run python html.py. Uh-oh. Oh, we get an error. So what did I do? Let's go ahead and let's save this file instead of html.py, which is probably a stupid name. Let's call this uh, h1.py. All right, so let's go ahead and save this and run it. All right, so let's go python h1.py. Can't have a file called html.py when we're calling HTML label, throws it off. So, okay, we get this hello world h1 tag, and that's really cool. And that's really all there is to it. Now, there are some cool things we can do here. So first, let's look at creating a link. And instead of a pad Y, let's also give this a pad X of 20 to push it off the side a little bit. So let's say in here, we want a link instead. So let's create a link tag. So we would go a href equals, and you want to use single quotation marks because outside of here, we've used double, right? So inside we need to use single. So let's go HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash codemy.com. And let's go learn to code. And then we need to close our a tag. So we have opening a tag, closing a tag, and there's our text. So if we go ahead and save this and run it. We see we've got now a clickable link. And if we click on it, it boom, it automatically opens up a web browser and goes to that URL. So this alone is a really, really cool feature. And you may just install this thing just to use that because a lot of times in your Kinter app, you just might want a little link on your about page or something and opens a web browser. This is a super easy way to do it. One line of code, two lines of code, whatever it is. And that's just really, really cool. So we can use more than one tag at any given time. So say we want to also make this big, we could wrap this whole thing, we can nest it in an H1 tag. All right, so let's go ahead and save this and run it. And we see learn to code very, very big, right? And uh, so cool. So that's one thing. Now let's also look at images. So let me head back to codemy.com and let's just grab a random image. Let's say we want to use this image. So I can copy the image location. And if I want to paste this in here, this is where this image is sitting on my web server. It's actually sitting on a CDN content delivery network, but this is the address of that image. What if we want to use that in our Kinter app? Well, we can with the HTML image tag. So one thing I'll note, this is getting a little sloppy, right? There's a bunch of stuff here. So what we can do is put this on multiple lines using the backslash. So we could, for instance, do this, another backslash. Here's our, our link. Maybe another backslash, right? Maybe this is a little easier to read. You could also put all of this into a variable and then just put the variable here. Maybe we'll look at that in a second. But for now, let's go ahead and add that image. So the image tag is IMG SRC. And then we need single quotes. And then we just paste in that URL where the image is. Now we've not downloaded this. This is still online and everything. And but this should just work. So let's go ahead and save this and run it. And there's that image. Now you'll notice it's not quite the right size. Let's look at the website again. Yeah, no, the monitor should be the full size. But if I hover my mouse over it and then spin the mouse wheel, it moves, right? So that's kind of interesting, but it's probably not what we want. So what we actually need to do is change our pack down here. So let's also give this a fill equals both and and expand equals true. And let me just put these on separate lines so that we can sort of read them easier. There we go. So give your pack a fill of both and expand of true, that will expand everything out the way it's supposed to if we save this now and run it. We see it's now expanded to the, the correct size that it's supposed to be. And uh, very, very cool. So that's using an image that is on the internet, you could also use an image that you have on your computer. So for instance, I have a file in C colon forward slash GUI forward slash images forward slash Aspen dot PNG. So we can use local images as well, just like this. So let's go ahead and save this and run it make sure that, that looked okay. And boom, we get that image as well. Oh, very, very cool. Uh, let's see, we can also do lists 
ordered list, unordered lists. So let's come up here and let's right here, create an ordered list. So we use the order list tag, there we go. And I'm gonna put these on separate lines. So li, and I'm just gonna say one, li, and let's just copy this. Two, three, four, I don't know, maybe just three. So let's go one, two, three. And then we need to close our order list tag, right? And you can see this is kind of getting a little sloppy. That's one of the downsides of this. We have to use these slashes to make these multi-line things, but all in all, that's a small price to pay to use HTML on your Kinter app. So let's go ahead and save this and run it. And oh, there it's all H1 tags. So our app is getting out of hand here. So one, two, three. Okay, we probably don't want H1 tags in all of these things. Oh, this should be a closing H tag. There we go. Save this and run it. Typo there, my HTML. And now we get one, two, three, ordered lists. We can do unordered lists. So those are with numbers. Unordered lists are just bullet points. All right, so that's UL instead of OL. We need to close our UL tag. Save this and run it. And now we get dots instead of numbers, so that's cool. We could use different H tags. So it, we've used H1 tag already, but we could also do like uh, H4, close this. And then for this one, we could do H5, close that. And for this one, we can do H6 and close that. H tags get progressively smaller. So H1 is the biggest one, H2 is the next smallest one, H3, H4, H5, H6. So if we save this and run it, oh, we get probably not exactly what we wanted, but uh, you get the idea, they change sizes. So that's cool. Just go ahead and take that off because that is horrible looking. All right, so what else can we do here? Well, if we pull up this website and go back, we can see we could do line breaks, we could do code, uh, we could do pre-tags, those are kind of interesting. So code is good for using code and pre is also useful for doing code. So up here, maybe instead of H1, we might go, well, let's go pre, and then our closing H1 tag, we'll close that pre-tag, save this and run it. You can see now the code, now it's sort of changed font a little bit. Eh, sort of interesting. You can do the same thing with the code tag instead of the pre-tag. That's probably gonna do roughly the same thing. So close our code tag, save this and run it. Yeah, it just basically changes the, the text a little bit, but really, really cool. And so the main thing here that we're looking at is to easily use images, which is probably why you need Pillow installed, right? So if images have given you problems in the past, this is a great way to use either local images or images from online that you're pulling into your app on the fly. It's a great way to use links. So open, you need to open a web browser in your Kinter app. What a great way to do it, super easy. And you know, some of these other things are kind of neat, unordered list and ordered list, uh, that's kind of cool. Some of the other things, you know, making things bold or italics, uh, okay, that's kind of cool. Right, using the P tag, eh, that might be interesting. Other than that, that's pretty much it. But still, very, very cool and super easy to use. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeme.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. We pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from CodeMe.com and I'll see you in the next video.